All right, so everyone, I wanna have you guys meet one of my great buddies, Edwin Kelly with Specialized IRA Trust Company now. Specialized Trust and Company, yes. Specialized Trust Company, uh, formerly Specialized IRA Services. Uh, I've been with Edwin for a long time. I think we started 2017, somewhere in there. Um, and uh, I went through, Edwin's got a, like a you know one-on-one -on -one coaching program to help us get set up. And it's just been a great friendship that's really evolved uh, from there. I got to know him as, as a dad, as a father, as a, you know, as a, uh, a follower of the, of, of the same spiritual beliefs. It's a great human being, a great time to have him on. He's going to focus on retirement accounts, retirement account investing, and the power of that. And especially for folks in real estate or looking to build generational wealth. And when the, 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 the series of this uh, YouTube series we're talking about is how to build a, fa a family office, how to build generational wealth. One of the things that I saw clearly early why I went to Edwin is once you start writing six figure checks to the IRS, you start looking for solutions. Now, hopefully we can have some more tax planning and, and be more proactive. I was reactive on this. So that's, that's why Edwin's here. And, and I think, uh, Edwin, you want to talk a little about, you know, about you, your background, anything that you want to cover with the, with our, most of, most of our people know you, but Anything you want to share there? Yeah, well, just as 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 a quick intro, then um, you know my 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 journey to you know financial freedom began back when I was in sixth grade. Uh, that's when I started working, doing anything that anybody would pay me to do. Which at that stage of the game was basically mow lawns, rake leaves, and shovel driveways. Right, that's what I was qualified go. to do back then. And and those jobs were uh, that that was the grind, man. Uh, but anyway, saved started earning money, uh, saved money opened up my first UGMA account. I'm not going to go into basic stuff. I can define what some of this stuff is. If you, if you know, great. If not, it's not a big deal. But uh, opened up my first UGMA account when I was in middle school, actually. Made my very first investment and was investing ever since. I was hooked on investing from a young age because I actually made a, enough profit in one year investing in middle school than I did the previous year working all those jobs that I hated doing. And so I knew that the wealth and the money was going to, for me anyway, it was going to be made in investing and all focused on money. And so from that point forward, that was really my journey. That was the start of my journey. And, and so I was always looking for something that, you know, what really works in life. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I wanted to learn from the most successful people and basically duplicate what they were doing. And that's really where I discovered self-directing from. And so for some people, they know that term. Some people, they don't know what that is. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably get into some of that. But um, founded specialized uh, trust company with my business partner Keith Marsh, and uh, we we set up this company because just like what you said, there's a lot of people who hear about self-directing. There's some people who figure out that self-directing has a tremendous value to achieve a lot of different things financially, which we'll get into. But um, there's not a lot of support in terms of how to really implement right and solve some of the challenges that self-directing can really help with. So that's kind of what separated us apart. What made us decide that we wanted to go launch this company was to really make help people make an impact on their financial lives. Sure. No, I love that. And 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 for all our audience, I'm very close friends with Edwin and very close friends with Keith. And we have accounts there ourselves. So I trust these two guys implicitly. When I look at any investment, I always look at who is the jockey, no matter what, right? Uh, I'm betting on the jockey, not the horse. And these two guys are just great guys and they run a great company. They're above board. So that's the, let, let's start there. Why is this so important? Here's my framework. And Edwin, feel free to elaborate or use the framework or not, or create a different one. Framework is taxes are going to go up. There is no doubt about it. This MMT, more money today, they're going to print money, uh, devalue the currency, not really print money. They're going to add excess reserves into the system. They're going to devalue, and how they're going to do that is going to, they're going to devalue the currency. As they do that, they're going to raise taxes. You have less people working, right? You've got the, um, forget the, the, there's a stat on that, but the number of people have employed has gone down, which means less tax revenue to them, right? So they're going to raise taxes and they're going to raise taxes on what they call the rich. And within that, if you don't see that coming, that's a whole other. So I want to get your thoughts on that. And then the second part is, Within tax planning, you've got two different things. You've got never pay tax again. So pay it up front and never pay tax again. So really that's my always my first choice is, hey, can we eliminate taxes? Can we pay them up front and then never pay them again? Uh, and then plan B is just defer them, right? So you, ideally a combination of both, but I always go to the first hurdle if I can is eliminate them forever. What are your thoughts on that? Um, on A, the taxes and then B, the framework. Yeah, well, so as an example, uh you know, I have a client who um, we started working with way back in 2004, 
right? And when I say we started working with him back then, he opened up his very first Roth self-directed IRA. Uh, his main goal, and, and again, this is one of the things that we help clients do, but just to make it super simple and quick for today's purposes, his goal was to replace his earned income, right? His, his daily J-O-B with a passive income. And what he figured out was because he was in his 50s at the time, he was 53 actually when he opened up that first account back in 04. What he figured out was, hey, if I generate an income stream from a Roth IRA because I don't ever have to pay any income tax or capital gains tax, no tax at all, zero tax. So if I generate $1,000, I get to spend $1,000, right? And so he said, I could make a percentage of my income right now and still maintain my lifestyle, right? Nothing changes because sure, I don't sure. pay taxes anymore. So beginning in 2015, he took his first monthly distribution and long story short, his, 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 his monthly distributions exceed what he used to make in a month. Now, Amazing. the reason why I just share that is to set the context. If you're asking that question to him and say, where do you think taxes are going to go? His answer is going to be something to the long lines of, who cares? It ain't my problem. That is the point. The best situation you can be in is if you can say, I don't care who's president. I don't care what their tax policy is because I'm immune to it, right? I mean, basically a Roth, and there's other types of Roth accounts. Roth IRA is what most people think about, but Roth account is the only legal way that I know to go from forever taxed to never taxed. Forever right. taxed to never taxed is what a Roth does for you. So all these conversations you can spend a lot of time thinking about and talk to CPAs and spend money and come up with tax strategies. Or you can say, you know what? I just don't want this to be my problem at all. And I'm going to develop a strategy, go down the tax-free path, right? I and, love it. And, love and that's it. the alternative. Yeah. Well, I love what, the way you phrased it. The way you framed it is, hey, let's take this conversation off the table. For example, when I talk to my CPA, who's a great CPA, and we'll have him on here uh, hopefully next week, he doesn't even look at my IRAs, my, excuse me, my Roth IRA. He doesn't even look at it. So it's like, it's a great way to just take it off the table. Like we just take this and just go over here. It's like, he's like, you know, just keep growing it, right? Keep doing things over there. So it's a, it's a great way uh, to the extent, and Edward made a great point to the extent that you can, um, uh, the only thing it requires you to delay that gratification and be able to kind of meet your current cash flow needs, because a lot of this, correct me if I'm wrong, Edwin, with the Roth IRA, two requirements. A, you have to have earned income. You have to have some kind of income coming in that you're paying self-employment tax on. And I think the contributions are like maybe six or 7,000 a year, depending on age. You know, your age, et cetera. And then you can start tapping that money when you're what, 65, somewhere in there? 59 and a half. 59 and a half. Unless I tell um, you otherwise. Just like anything, just like any other, huh? Unless I tell you otherwise, it's 59 yeah, There you go, and 59 and a half. So yeah, uh, th that's, that's kind of pretty much the, the basic of the, of, of, the, of the Roth IRA. Is there something else I wanted to say? And then just, there's this thing about a five-year thing. What's that? Like after you have it, there's other ways you can pull the money out, right? So if you if you have it, if the money's vested for five years, so you have an account for five years, you've been depositing it in, is there a way you can take some of that principal out or, or that's only if you're after 59 and a half? Yeah, so, so those are all great questions. Um, and that's one of the, so here's the thing that I always tell people about IRAs. Because when I ask people, why aren't you using a retirement account? Um, or why don't you do more with the retirement account you already have, right? Because most people actually have one. Like it, 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 depending upon age group, I can just tell you the average is about, you know, people watching this right now, 70 to 80% of you have a retirement account, right? I mean, that's, that, that I know is a fact. So uh, in fact, actually, it might be closer to 100% because you have a pretty well-educated, right, audience who's, who's in tune with this stuff. So actually, this audience, it might be more like 100%. However, that doesn't mean it's necessarily an integral part of your plan. You may not be paying a lot of attention to it, or it might just be off to the side, right? You're not really thinking about it. And one of the reasons why that is, is that people say, well, anything I put over there is for the future. And, it, and I think in people's minds, the future is, yeah, I'm never going to get there. Believe it or not, you will. But sure. suffice it to say, okay, that sometimes people say, well, if I put money in that account, then I feel like I lose control over it, right? And then I can't really do much with it. And it's, and it's so long and there's restrictions before I can take it back. Here, so, so let me kind of address that whole mental construct. One the money in your IRA is always your money. You always have access to it, number one. The question isn't whether or not you can take it. The question is what are going to be the tax implications when you take it? Okay, that's a separate question. The second thing is, is that when the, one of the reasons why people feel like they lose control over the money when they put it in a retirement account is because uh, 
most financial institutions restrict them to a few handful of investments. And if you don't like them, you're out of luck, right? So when you self-direct your retirement account, those handcuffs, those restrictions go away because you can invest in anything allowed by the government. And just to summarize that list, effectively, there's a few, there's a few exceptions and caveats, but generally what I can tell you is, is that if you can do it outside your retirement account, you can do it inside your retirement account. Okay, that's true of the self-direct retirement account. So to, to, to drill that down and just make it a little bit more specific now. So as an example, you brought up the five-year clock and the 59 and a half. So what, what, with the Roth, what, what, what the rules say, the black and white rules say, is that to take a, what's called a qualified distribution, which means you can take money out and pay no capital gains tax, no income tax, no social security tax, no Medicare, no tax, no AMT, nothing. Which is nice. Tax free. You have to meet two requirements. You have to be 59 and a half and your account has to be established for five years. That's that five year clock. So as an example, you know, we're already into this year, right? We're already into this calendar year. So if you were to open up and put a uh, hundred dollars in a Roth right now, cause you don't have one already. January 1st of this year, the, the IRS is going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Assume that you open that account on January you know, 1st of this year, right? You've already got part of your clock running, but it would basically be five years from January 1st, the year you open and contribute to that account. Now, here, here's another thing, and I'll, I'm going to jump on this real fast too, Ramon, for you, sure. is that you asked, there's another kind of question layered in there. There's, there's ways to take money out of retirement accounts before you're 59 and a half, and, and it depends on a lot of details, but, but I can say this, so I'm not giving any tax advice, don't anybody take this as tax advice, but what I can tell you is, is that one of the other advantages to a Roth over tax deferred accounts, like you brought up, is that regardless of age and regardless of that five-year clock, you can always take your contributions out tax-free, penalty-free, anytime you want. So, so let me give you a scenario that Ramon would probably like, right? Because I know, because as Ramon says, we're friends and, and he's also a client and he's got accounts with us. So, so I know how Ramon thinks, right? And, and so I know Ramon, as, a, as an example, one of the things he loves right now is crypto, right? So let's say you make a $5,000 contribution to your Roth, you put it in crypto, and let's just say you double that this year. You probably do better than that, but let's just say you double it. So now your account value is $10,000. Well, you can say, hey, Edwin, send me my $5,000 back. No questions, no penalties, no taxes, no problem, right? He can take his $5,000 back because that represents his contribution. What about the additional $5,000 in profit? Well, that's the part that would be subject to taxes and penalties. So that he'd want to keep in the account. But my point is this, you have more access to your money than you realize. You have more control over your money than you realize when you set the stuff up correctly. One of the things I'll add there is everything that Edwin's company does is self-directed, meaning you control where you want to invest. And it's pretty much anything under the sun. There's a few exceptions that you're not able to do, but most things that you can do, you're just not yet educated on. So again, not financial advice. The assumption I do is I'm going to do everything through the IRAs to the extent that I'm told I'm not. And then if I'm not, then we'll figure out a plan B. So, um, and to the extent that just kind of not advice, but general strategy, a strategy that we use is we try and do everything through our, through our Roths first that we don't need before we go into other accounts, traditional and everything else. So when we fund things, we fund our traditional accounts. So let's switch gears a little bit into, uh, there's actually, let, actually, let's talk about Roths a little bit. What investments, Edwin, do you find that are best in the Roth? IRA ecosystem? Yeah. So I, the way I answer that question is that it really comes back to clients' goals. Okay. Now, having said that, right now, when I'm looking at what's going on in our economy and the world today, and so I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things that seem to be working. And let me just say this, I'm not going to give you any advice in this, in, in this, in this, this is hundred percent education only go verify everything with a licensed tax advisor, investment Correct. advisor, yes. right. And whoever you want to go talk to, but we're just talking about what we're seeing or what we've yeah. done. That's so, it. So this is my perspective. This is my opinion. You, you know, you, you can do with it what you want. Um, not financial advice. Right. Um, yeah. So this is Edwin's opinion. So um, inflation is higher than the government or the news media wants to tell us. Bottom line, sure. no argument. Okay, And so we're in an inflationary environment. I don't see that changing anytime in the near future. And so what does well in an inflationary environment? Typically, real estate right, is, is a great hedge against inflation. Typically, precious metals, physical precious metals, are a great hedge against inflation. Both of those things you can do. 
in a self-directed retirement account. And a third thing, which I believe now this is a little, we don't have the history on this, but I believe is also an excellent hedge against inflation is cryptos, right? I, I think that's another. So I think those three categories are things that will work well in the environment we're in, as well as we're going to be in for probably the next couple of years, right? That's just my perspective. Now, one other thing that can work really well, and this has traditionally been true in self-directed accounts for decades. So this is proven. Private lending and notes, right? Because that works really well inside of a self-directed retirement account because as the, as the account owner, right? If you're the IRA owner, you can be passive in that investment, which is very beneficial when investing in your retirement account because typically you, you as, as Ramon does, right? Runs another business, right? You've got other things that you're, or you have a career, right? You've got ways that you're generating income for right now. So, so the last thing you want to do is spend, have a full-time job managing and investing your account. So, so strategies like notes, private lending, those kinds of things, uh, participating in other transactions like that, um, those are great investment strategies inside of a self-directed retirement account because in many of those cases, it's a real estate play. And so you're getting the advantage of real estate without having to put the time, effort, and take on the risk of that. So I would say those are the four investment categories that I see most people have the most success with within self-directed IRAs and specifically in a market like this right now. I agree. Um, we've done lending out of there. We've done fix and flip out of out of the IRAs. We haven't held metals in the IRA. We hold them outside of the IRA, but it would be more beneficial to hold them inside the IRA. But uh, Edwin, even within there, you could, if you want to lever up, you want a little bit higher returns. What you could do is buy some, you know, some stocks, some junior mining companies, right? If you wanted some leverage on the cryptos, you could go further down in market cap and find something where it has a little bit more alpha. Generally, what I'll personally do is I'll look for investments in the Roth that are taxed at ordinary rates. So I'll look for the thing that's taxed the highest or that I'm going to hold the shortest, right? Generally, those two are in, al are in alignment and, and I'll look up kind of like structure, shelter those. What would I not personally put in a Roth IRA? Because there's some things I wouldn't do from a strategy perspective. Well, if I'm going to heavily encumber real estate and then do a cost segregation study to get bonus depreciation up front that I can then use against my active income somewhere else, I wouldn't necessarily put that in a Roth IRA, even though when I sell it, I'm not going to pay any taxes. Great. But then I lose the tax benefits up front. And if I highly lever something in my Roth IRA, then I might be subject to UBIT, which is unrelated, you know, uh, or with the other one, uh, UDFI, right? Because I have leverage in the investment, some of that gain is going to go to that leverage and I have to pay taxes. So I don't want to put a tax shelter in a tax shelter. If I'm investing in a tax shelter, I want to do that generally outside of my IRA to the extent that I can use the losses. Because some people just put it up, the vehicle and their losses and they have, they, have nothing, they have no income to offset the loss. So you want to be intelligent about when and where you do this. So it's not like a black and white rule, but generally I like to place real estate that I can depreciate and hold long term outside of the IRA, of the Roth IRA specifically. What, what are your thoughts on that, Edwin? Yeah, well, it depends on the strategy, right? Sure. So, so as an example, uh, the person that I referred to earlier, one reason why I use that example is because all the points you're making are very valid points depending upon where you're at and what your strategy is. At the same time, what Gary did was he was able to create an income stream, right, by creating a buy and hold portfolio inside of a Roth that today spins on, and by the way, he used leverage in the IRA and everything else trigger the UDFI like you're talking about. And when I've had these conversations with him, he's like, I don't care about any of that stuff. He says, because I don't know any other way I could make what I make consistently every single month, not have to work for it and never have to pay taxes again. Yeah. He says, I looked around, there's nothing else. So everything you're bringing up is very valid. If you have other income sources that you've created and you're trying to do offsets, 100% real estate's awesome outside of an account for that reason. When you're investing your account and in, in your self-directed retirement account specifically, what I tell folks is your investments should be driven by your goal and the result you're trying to achieve. So if real estate offers you certain benefits that you want from an investment standpoint and a cash flow standpoint, then it makes sense to do it inside the retirement account. If you're investing in real estate because you want tax write-offs to take, you know, depreciation, those kinds of things, then that's a better fit outside the retirement account. So it comes back to the goals and your strategy for doing it. Sure.
And, and, and timing, where are you at, right? Because yeah. if, if you don't have a lot of earned income, you might as well put it in the in the retirement. And, and if you don't need the, the cash flow immediately, you want to let it grow there, it can multiply there too. So again, it's, uh, and these things aren't mutually exclusive. You could do some in it and some out of it, right? So, so you could, you know, you could- And most of this. our clients are, right? I mean, yeah. like you do stuff in your account, you do stuff outside your account. Sure. Nobody's doing just one or the other. And that's one of the things that people ask me because when they hear it and, and they hear about self-directed accounts and I kind of go through it all and they talk about all the benefits of it, they'll say- well, how am I supposed to pay the bills right now? Because this is awesome. But how do I, like, if I do everything in my account, how am I supposed to live? I'm like, well, that's the point. You're not doing everything in your account. Like this right. is, this is not, this, this is a part of your strategy. This is not the entire strategy. Now it could be your entire strategy if you're 59 and a half and older, if, or if you're eligible to take, you know, the uh, distributions from a retirement account. But yeah, this is a part of your strategy if you're not in that scenario. No, I like that. I had to pick one vehicle for us personally. It's a solo K. Uh, solo K, from what I understand, generally has two buckets, has a, has a Roth bucket and a traditional bucket within the solo K. So now when we say solo K, the Roth solo K, we're talking about the solo K bucket and the Roth. The IRA, the Roth IRA that we talked spoke about earlier is governed by the IRS. The solo K is governed by the Department of Labor, different rules. So with the solo K, what I love about it is I can contribute additional dollars. I think it's 19 to 20 grand to the Roth bucket in the solo K. And then 25% of your salary to the traditional bucket into the uh, traditional solo K. And then you can actually convert that to a Roth if you want to, it's taxable, but then it's never taxed later. And the biggest thing I like about it is now you can actually get debt on this deal. So you can actually bring deals that have debt and not you're not subject to the, the, to the UBIT or UDFI. And then the other thing that I like about it is the, you can contribute additional dollars and then that you can get a loan against it. If you ever need the money, you can get a loan against it and pay yourself back. So I, I actually do a lot more in the Roth. The, and the main reason why is the, that additional 19, 20 grand a year then really allows you to compound and move that quickly. Edwin, what are your thoughts on the solo K to- Yeah, so what I say is that, so, so here's kind of an analogy I use. I say a, a, a self-directed IRA is like a Ferrari, right? It just makes everything work better and faster and it does it with a lot of style and panache, right? Mm -hmm. And so if a self-directed IRA is a Ferrari, what is a self-directed 401k or solo K? That is a private jet, right? It just takes everything to a whole new level, right? It just amplifies all the benefits that we get from those self-directed IRAs. So like you said, does everything that an IRA does, except it does it better and larger. And then Beyond that, it includes some additional bonuses, right? That we can get. Like you said, you can't borrow from your IRA. That's called a prohibited transaction. But can you borrow from your 401k? Yes, you can. Can you borrow inside your IRA? Yes, you can, but it triggers UDFI. Can you borrow inside your 401k? Yes, you can. And generally it doesn't trigger UDFI. So, right. That, so, so like that's where I mean. Like it just takes every, can you contribute to your to your self-directed IRA every year? Yes, you can. Can you contribute? five to eight times more to a 401k every year? Yes, you can, right? So that's why I mean, it takes everything, takes all the benefits of the IRA and amplifies it. And you can do both, everyone. You can contribute to your solo K and you can contribute to your, to your uh, IRA. So you can contribute both every year to the extent that you have enough income, earned income. That's the real key. I see a lot of guys, especially in different businesses or wherever they're at, they're not paying themselves a salary. And I go, well, then you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, you're, 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 you're not paying a 15% self-employment tax to, and now you just lose all these benefits. It's like, it's silly. And we were guilty of that for years. You know, now we pay ourselves enough of a salary so we can contribute, but not too much where it just, we, we're paying an extra 15% to the IRS without being able to really contribute those dollars. So you've got to find a good range where it makes sense for you. What you do, Ramon, is is well beyond what most people do, right? So so when Ramon started working, when we started working together, we created what we call a custom plan design for Ramon. And so Ramon actually implemented a bunch of different accounts and strategies because I grew up accounts into three categories and he's checked all of those categories and he he's maxed out his plan, which is one reason why you're doing so well financially, right? That's a big piece of your financial picture. It's not all of it. It's a piece of it. But that piece, right, has done extremely well for you because you know how to use those different accounts and you know how they connect together. You know how to maximize them and, and max out those contributions. So you're able to do that every single year. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to figure out what that is for you. So so we'll maximize, we'll always look to maximize the Roth bucket first. And if a year, you know, we're having a rough year, or we don't want to do the traditional bucket, we don't have to. Um, I do want to speak a little bit about back doors because that's some of, some of the guys might qualify for that. So 
there's two back doors uh, from what I understand. Edwin will clarify a lot more. And you, you, you guys might say, why does Ray know about this? Well, A, I've been sitting on the shoulders of giants like Edwin and other uh, attorneys that helped me here. But, and secondly, I want to be able to get out of this tax regime that we're currently in and, and get to a tax neutral place. We're like, hey, do whatever you want. Like you said initially, I don't care what happens. I'm in a tax neutral place. And that's ultimately where you want to be in terms of the back door. If you have a certain income and you no longer qualify, well, then you can make a traditional contribution to the, to the IRA and then just convert it to the Roth. So sometimes there's, a, there's an income limit. Um, so you can go to the traditional and then go the other way. And I don't believe there's a limit, uh, Edwin, correct me if I'm wrong on the solo K, correct? There's no income limit on the solo K, no. Okay. That, that won't prevent you from making a Roth contribution to the solo K. So really, guys, there's no reason for you not to do that. The second conversion, and I, I've got a guy who knows about this well. Uh, I don't know if you heard about it, uh, Edwin, is the backdoor mega Roth, mega, mega solo K Roth. So you've got like a, you make like a contribution to the Roth, but then you can go above the 19. And you, you take like, you know, I think the max for the solo case is about 52. So you take a portion of your salary, it goes into the traditional, the, the 19 grand goes to the solo K, but then there's another like 30 grand that you can like contribute to it and then do like a, what's called a mega backdoor Roth. You guys can look it up. We've never done it before. You know, we, we just don't do that, but you can then convert that to the, to the Roth, the solo K Roth and get, you know, even more, get, you know, 30, 40 grand in there every single year. And again, 30, 40 grand, if it's you and your spouse, it's a lot of money to play with. And you can partner with the solo K of your spouse to do deals. Generally speaking, right, contributions to solo Ks are broken into two, a couple of different categories. And then there's a couple of different tax treatments built into there. But, but suffice it to say this to make it easy is that generally speaking, most people, if you qualify for a solo K, can contribute 50 to 60,000 per year. That can be all tax-free money like Roth. It could be all tax-deferred money like traditional, or it could be a combination of the two. And so you as the client are empowered to make that decision. One of the things that make, made that possible was in 2013, what you're referring to is, is that the government wrote into the rules, uh, they amended the rules to allow what they call in-service conversions. So now, right, so the employer contribution as an example has to go into the tax deferred bucket, but it's irrelevant because if you want it all tax free, you can immediately convert it. And that's what you're talking about. And, and we so, do that, yeah, guys. And, and that becomes taxable. Great strategy. Full, full, full disclosure, that becomes taxable. But if you're in a low tax rate base like we were last year, dude, convert it. I, I mean, and, and again, we, you know, we, we run numbers and we help people with illustrations and, and, and help them, you know, just get information. Uh, but it's amazing how many professional advisors do not strongly encourage the Roth. And, my, and actually, my guess is, is that most advisors, which I disagree with uh, when it comes to certain issues, I'll say that, let me qualify that statement. But um, certain advisors get it all wrong, right? Because the, their basic premise is that you're going to be in a lower tax bracket in the future. So, so absolutely exercise your, your tax deductions now. If taxes go up, like, um, right, you think they are, I think they are, I don't see how they're, I mean, look, the, the, that's one promise that, that I do believe this administration will keep, right? <laughs> they said they're sure. going to raise taxes, sure. they're going to raise taxes. And sure. when they say they're going to raise taxes on the rich, get to, get to your point, Ray, if you've got a job, guess what? You're rich these days. Sure. So here it comes, you know, yeah. get ready. And uh, so, so I think you're going to see a lot more push for tax deductible accounts. However, when I look at the illustrations and I run the numbers, I, I don't see, like to me, the Roth, it is the end all be all. Like it, it really, it makes sense in most scenarios that I've seen. It, it's a holy um, grail, guys. This is the holy grail really of you take the conversation off the table. Because you notice that when I'm really talking a lot about traditional, the only traditional we mentioned is being able to get more dollars into the Roth. That's the only reason yeah. we mentioned traditional. It's because, gateway. Yeah, we, we both feel that long term taxes are going to be higher. I don't want to be personally in a place of retirement where I'm making less income. I want to make more income when I retire. I mean, that's why we're talking about generational wealth, right? We're going to have issues as we go further along, not to mention estate issues. And uh, the other the other loopholes are going to try and create the create taxable events, right? As you then take this IRA or Roth IRA or solo K and then you pass that on to your beneficiaries. What are those taxes going to look like? So you really want to think through this. Um, and again, like Edwin said, there's a lot of advisors that don't understand, but there's a lot of them that do and are, are, are really sharp with it. So you definitely want to find one. And we had one on who really gets it. He was on the earlier episode. Uh, you can look at that. It's episode number one with Bryce. He understands that. And, and it's it should be part of your retirement plan. This, this yeah, great, great content in, in that uh, conversation you had with Bryce. I mean, that was, that was really, really good stuff. One of the things that I'll say about that is, is that, again, when, when I'm working with a client, 
I'm looking at it, well, what do you, what do you really want to accomplish? Right. And so I have many clients who are, who are taking in the deductions right now. And I get it because they're looking at their tax bill and their CPA is saying, look, your tax bill is this, but if you take a tax deduction on the contribution, you get to save this much money. And, and I get it. And that's why most of my, my clients who use the tax deferred accounts, the tax deductible accounts are using it because they, they feel this immediate pain. Sure. And so here's the analogy I'll give you, because again, whatever account you use, uh, you can self-direct into all these things like we're talking about, cryptocurrencies, real estate, notes, precious, whatever you want to do, right? That, that's, the, that's the beauty of it. So, so here's kind of the analogy that I give, right? Um, I would much rather have a bag of potato chips and drink a few beers and sit on the couch and watch Netflix, right? That's way easier for me than actually, you know, doing intermittent fasting, eating a lot of vegetables and drinking mostly water and exercising on a regular basis every day. Okay. So, so I'd rather do that. But the reason why I do something different is because long-term 10 years from now, I'm going to be glad I did. That's the comparison between the traditional and the Roth, in my opinion, right? The traditional is the beer and chips. Okay. The Roth is the salad and the water and the consistent exercise. If you go the Roth route 10, 15, 20 years from now, you would be so thankful that you did, okay? Today you won't be because you're seeing the tax bill and you're handing the money over to government willingly. That's the hard part about it. You know you can reduce it, but you're willingly giving it over. That's not an easy choice. Look, I'm in the same situation. I mean, my tax bill is ridiculous, okay? But guess what? I'm doing the Roth because I know the long-term benefit. I get it. And by the way, just as a quick side note on that, my my crypto strategy is the money that I put into crypto, for me anyway, everybody has a different strategy. So my crypto strategy is I look at it for the long run, right? I put money into crypto that I don't need. If I needed it, I wouldn't put it in crypto. That's that's my approach to it. But sure, because sure. I don't need the money, why would I want to do it in anything other than a Roth? Because if it goes up a hundred times in value, why would I ever want to give the government any piece of that profit? I don't. That's why I love the Roth because I know if my crypto went up a hundred times, they don't get to touch it ever. Sure. sure. Right. Yeah, that's, one of the, that's one of the mistakes I made. Um, so I have a that's two questions. How do you actually do that um, with, with Specialized? How do you actually purchase crypto? Is there like, can you walk us through that process? Let's say someone wants to buy Cardano, which is one of our currencies we talk about. Like, how would they actually do that? Yeah, so it's a it's a great process. And, and we're, we have one process that we based on, you know, I got feedback from some pretty active, very entrenched uh, crypto investors. And I said, you know, how do you, how do you trade? How do you want to do this, right? How, how do you like to invest? Sure. And... So the number one thing that I heard when I talked to different crypto investors was, well, I like Coinbase, but then someone else says I would never use Coinbase and it doesn't matter. And I'm just using that as an example. I, I could say that about any crypto any trading change, platform yeah. out there. It doesn't matter. Right. And, and so what I heard, the common theme was I want to use the platform that I want to use. And I don't want somebody else dictating to me how to do this. Don't give me just one platform that I have to use. So what we did was we can walk the client through a strategy where you basically, the first step, number one, is you set up your self-directed retirement account. Step number two is you fund that. So you're either transferring money or you're writing a check and making a contribution like you brought up, right? Step number three is you're setting up an LLC that is going to be wholly owned by your self-directed retirement account. And then the crypto platform, right? You're going to open that platform or set up that account in the name of that LLC. So okay. now what, because you have the LLC that's owned by the, the, the self yes, retirement, retirement account, account, you can choose any platform that you like to use. That's you could have multiple platforms. You're not locked into a platform that a IRA custodian dictates you need to use. I like that. So, so that's how we did it. Because again, I'm all about the, the benefit of self-directing to me is that you have the power and control over your circumstances, right? That's really, to me, the benefit of self-directing. You know, you know what's I, crazy, Evan, is the power right. in crypto is the same thing. Is It's fully decentralized. It's giving the power back to you so that you can make the decision. Hey, you don't like this asset. You don't like what they're doing. Go somewhere else. Like that. Yeah. You're, it, it's ultimately a very libertarian view. And I don't mean to put a frame on you, but it's, it's a very like freedom. Go where you want invest how you want and, and, and do what's best for you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can tell you right now, I mean, I'm not God, which you can, you can tell because if I was God, I'd make myself look like Brad Pitt. Okay. 
But, but the reality is, is that because I'm not God, I have no business telling somebody else what they should do and how they should do it with their money and their livelihood and their future, right? I want to make that decision for me. You should have the right to make that decision for you. So everything we do from a company standpoint, it, it all has to be compliant and comply with government rules. But within that context, if I can give you the power to make your own choices and your own decisions and control your circumstances, I'm going to do that every time, right? That's, yep, that, yep. that's our yep. philosophy because that's really the power. That's in great. It. And, and, and again, so what Edwin's talking about now is really checkbook control, where you now open up an LLC and you can do this with the solo K or you can do this and and you can do this and or you could do this with the Roth IRA. You can open up, you know, you have an LLC that then takes those funds and invest those funds. And then really, Edwin, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can buy any cryptocurrency now because now you're giving them that LLC that's that um, wholly owns the, you know, that, that solo K or IRA. And then they can invest in any platform they want and any token they want. Right. And, and to me, particularly with crypto, I, I'll tell you what, I, I think that's important because, you know, having gone down this path myself, right, there's different platforms and people, right, feel a certain way about this, that or the other way. Uh, there, there's different ways of, of storing your, your, your keys and, and all of these, right, there's so many options and choices that you have in this world. And I think that's one of the big attractions to it is that each person gets to decide for themselves what they want to do how they want to do it. And you get to make decisions at every kind of juncture. So to try to force somebody onto a platform that says there's only one way to do it, and this is the way you're going to do it if you're doing it with us, I just think it loses the, the appeal or the the, the benefits you. of, of, yeah, of it, right? There's, so, there's other companies that do what this, what, what Edwin is talking about on the IRA, but they limit you to what tokens they have because they control the platform. But if they control the platform, now it becomes a limited choices. It's it's better than you know a kick to the stomach, but I'd rather have complete discretion of what I want to invest in and and which platform I choose. Yeah, a hundred percent. One question before I want to talk a little more about crypto. We will. Who is not eligible for this all okay? And and what are the what are other alternatives? Suppose that they have a bunch of employees and they run out and they have a team and they're not eligible for the solo K. What other alternatives do they have? Yeah. So, you know, that's where it becomes, I can give you some general ideas on that because it really comes back to the specific, like I always tell people like there's no cookie cutter approach to this, right? I wish there was because then I could automate the whole thing and get rid mm -hmm. of my payroll. Right. Mm -hmm. But I can't get rid of payroll because there ain't no automated approach mm -hmm. to this. And, and so there's no cookie cutter approach. So if, it, so, so let's talk about who the solo K was, was, developed for when the government developed this 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 account right sure. um the idea was is that there's iras which individuals have access to we all have access to them and then you have 401ks tsps you know 403bs you know, all kinds of we'll call them company sponsored plans and you and, and basically the i think the government kind of viewed the world as an individual and a big company right microsoft and so big companies like microsoft could have 401k plans for all their employees and then it's like, okay, well, if somebody is, is not covered by a 401k, they have access to this IRA. The challenge was is that you could put way more money into a 401k than you could an IRA. All right. And so you have a lot. And, and what the government finally woke up and realized was, well, hey, 75% of businesses out there are basically you know, small businesses, sometimes just mom and pop shops. And, and so they're locked out of this opportunity with 401ks because all the record keeping and the administration we require means that the fees are high and that only larger companies with lots of employees can actually afford those types of plans. So the, the single, you know, sole proprietor guy or uh, lady or, or the married couple that's doing this together, they don't have access to that stuff. So they said, okay, well, because it's just the two of them or the one of them, if it's just a, a sole proprietor, we could relax some of these re reporting requirements. We could relax some of these administration requirements because it's just their money in the plan. They're, they don't, there's no employee money in there. So we don't have to have those concerns and try to protect people that don't exist in that world. And so they were able to augment the rules to where the pricing could be brought down and the record keeping and the administration, all those things could be taken care of where it now financially makes sense for that uh, sole proprietor or that sole proprietor and their spouse. So that's typically who qualifies, meaning you have a business, okay? So you've got to be in business to qualify and it has to be you or you and your spouse, okay? If you fall into that category, then you qualify, generally speaking, right? Generally speaking, you qualify for the solo K. And you have it, earned income because Edwin, you'd be surprised how many guys I talked to that aren't paying themselves a salary. I'm oh like, God. Yeah, so, okay. So fair enough. So I'm going to, I'm going to make two more assumptions. Well, so let me spell out my assumptions yeah. that I'm going with here. You have to have 
So if we're talking about IRAs, so let me cover this first. You have to have earned income and a tax identification number, i.e. social, right, to contribute to an IRA, okay? Now, for a 401k, you need basically the same things. You need a you need earned income or compensation so that you can make the, the contribution and you need a tax ID number. In this particular case, it's actually an EIN, okay, because it's a it's still a company sponsored plan. It's just your company, your own personal business Correct. that's sponsoring it. So you need an EIN and you need earned income, right? Or or you know, compensation. Correct. And that is what enables you to open and contribute to that plan. Now there is, let me just say this real fast, is that we open up, we have a lot of people who are starting new businesses. They left, say, a career. They're starting a new business. They've got money in the old 401k at their employer, or they got money in an IRA. Sure. Can if, if they haven't made any profit yet, and they haven't paid themselves any money yet, can they establish a 401k and transfer that money into it to fund their own 401k, their solo 401k plan? Yes, they can. Right, because the money's already in an account, we can move that tax deferred money into a tax. That's a great point. Okay. Yeah, if you have so you if you have a Roth or, or a solo K, you can bring it over, right? Right. Like like you can bring that over. You you can convert a, a you know a, a, a Roth that you have on your own somewhere else that doesn't let you self direct. You can bring that over from Fidelity to whoever into into Edwin's company, and they'll do that. Same thing with a solo K. If you used to work for GE like I did, you can bring those funds over into the solo K tax free. Yeah. So 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 there's ways to fund a plan. It's not just contributions, sure. but just to clarify, right? What we're talking about is if you're going to make a contribution, then you need those things, mm -hmm. right? Those are the qualifications to make a contribution. Mm -hmm. But you can qualify for the plan and still fund the plan without having earned income yet from the business. But sure. uh, but let me clarify that too, because that's a, that's a, something that comes up with a lot of people. Because a lot of folks, a lot of our clients, they're transitioning, say, from um, W-2 income, right? Having a career to, they have their side hustle that's not becoming their full-time thing, right? They're transitioning to full-time entrepreneur or investor. Well, they can qualify to open up the solo K and transfer money into it, say from another IRA or an old 401k, but do they qualify to contribute? Well, the, to specifically contribute to the 401k plan that is sponsored by their own business, they have to show compensation from their own business. The fact that they have compensation or earn income from a different business doesn't count for the 401k. Makes I don't sense. want to split hairs on that, but I, again, just to cover no, all the makes bases, sense. you know, um, th there are some nuances there. So, so, but again, if, if this is something you're interested in, we have people who just help you understand yeah. all that and we'll walk you through it. So crypto, we spoke about that. Uh, we hadn't talked about that in a little bit because I know last time we spoke, you weren't in crypto. Out of curiosity, what made you uh, not convert over, but what made you actually invest in the assets? We, in, in the past, you and I had just talked about it at high level, but it seems like you've actually moved on some things. What 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 changed your mind there? Or what kind of led you to, to dive in? Well, I was not a big believer in crypto. And the... <laughs> The reason why I wasn't a big believer in crypto was because it seemed 100% speculative and just, uh, I'll call it, I'll, I'll liken it to the stock market, right? I, I didn't understand it. I knew I had no control over it, nor did anybody I knew who had a control over it. And I said, you know what? I don't like things I don't control. And I figured the government's going to step in at some time and shut it down. And I, you know, is there a risk of that happening? Sure, there's a risk. Do I think it's likely at this point? Probably not. I, I think it's been too widely adopted. And I think it's one of those things that once it's out of the box, how do you put it back in kind of thing? So so I came to the conclusion that I don't think the government is going to shut it down or they're going to be able to shut it down anytime in the near future. So then at that point, I said, you know what? I really want to understand what crypto is all about. And so I started... Um, you know, studying up on blockchain and Bitcoin and then, right, how, how this all works. And the long short story short is that I had to kind of laugh, but this is also what informs my, my how I incorporate it into what I'm doing right now, is that when I really started to understand it, I said, I, I just busted out laughing. I said, basically, what this guy who created Bitcoin and, and, and blockchain, right, kind of came up with the, the ledger system and, and all these things, Basically, what he did was he looked at, okay, how does the government operate and how does the Federal Reserve System operate? I'm just going to duplicate that model, but I'm going to make it available to everybody. So it's basically that game, right? I, that, that's how I interpret it. It's like that game, but it's a game that we can all get in, right? And we can all participate in now. I, I, I'm going to decentralize it bottom right. up versus top down. 
Yeah, it's it, it's ba- yeah. So so it's basically the same game coming at it from two different directions, right? Sure. And and so at that point, I said, okay, I believe there's enough interest in this, and I believe there's enough people getting into it that for me, I'm willing to put money into it that I don't need, and that if I never got back, I'd be okay with. Sure. And and I'm also it looking at it from the long term is that I'll put it in and, you know, I'll buy on dips. And that's kind of like what I like to do. I like to buy on dips, right? And I'll just take a long-term view where I'm just going to let it go. Like, I don't want to be an active trader. I don't want to look at it on a daily basis. Yeah, that's not I don't do that approach. either. Yeah, I don't right? active trade it. Yeah, we hold it. Um, um, so, so that's okay. kind of how I approach crypto. And and so that's that, that's kind of what got me. Well, and, and part of it, it, take a step back and I'll give you some kudos and credit for this because I do pay attention to what my friends and clients are doing, right? And so you and I have talked about it and I knew you were in it and, and you were really engaged in it, really interested in it. I had numerous other clients and friends who were doing it. And so I said, you know what? These are people that I respect and know, and they do well with money. So it, I think I need to take a serious look at it and start to understand this. I don't put money in things I don't understand. And so I didn't understand crypto. So I had zero interest when I didn't understand anything, you know, even though I knew people who were putting money in it. I said, I don't do that. I, I got to understand it myself. And and so I've been working on that and continue to, to research it, study it, and to understand it, you know, better yeah. on a daily basis. We all, we all do. Yeah, yeah. We, we all do. And I, I sent you a couple of videos to look at on yeah. you know, blockchain versus cryptocurrency, right? Because what, what I'm really investing in, what I like about the space is the actual tech. I think this tech is going to be revolutionary. And sure, there's some currencies that run on it. And I think that if the government outlaws anything, I think it'll be the currency. But the actual blockchain rails, I believe the government's going to use these rails. It's going to use the technology just like it used the internet. Uh, mm-hmm. And a lot of businesses, in my opinion, this is inevitable, are going to use the blockchain. I, I so, agree. I think so. Yeah, so that, that that's kind of where most of my investments are in in the in the blockchain space, not so much the cryptocurrency space. space right? Well, and it's interesting that you say that because there's, and I'm not going to mention any specific ones, but I'll just say that there's certain things that surround that. It's kind of the support to the crypto market as opposed to the crypto market itself that sure. I'm actually looking at as making those. That's a different investment that I'm looking at. That I like. It, it's kind of like, the, the, the analogy I use there, it, 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 it's it's selling the jeans and, and the picks and the shovels to the guys who are out digging for gold. I was thinking, you know, I, I, I don't want to dig way. for gold, but I'll sell the stuff the that picks they and shovels, all 100%. day long, right? Yeah, well, or that's what I look that at. all day long. Yeah. 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 And, and, and we're so that's the, the play I like. Yeah, that's the angle I approach it yeah. from. That's really where more of my interest lies is what, yeah. what are the businesses or the platforms that I can invest in that actually support that whole market sure. and move it? Because to, to your point, I think that's the real value as opposed to whatever... The, the latest, you know, crypto mm-hmm. is that everybody wants to buy or sell or whatever. Sure. Who's creating the rails? Who's creating the infrastructure on which that digital currency of the future financial operating system is going to work on? So what I, the way I'm seeing this is this is going to disrupt a lot of different industries. Mm-hmm. Specifically, my biggest one is the financial operating system. This is going to be like a new financial operating system that layers on top of the current one. And eventually the Fed and everybody else is going to be forced to transition or work in both worlds where now this is they actually you think they have less control they actually have more control they issue out their own currency and they can apply behavioral economics to edwin hey edwin you're a great business owner you know what i'm going to send you some money to your digital wallet but i need you to spend it in 24 uh you know in 24 hours whereas edwin's secretary she might get a different incentive hey she we want her to save we're going to pay her 10 percent interest on her on her stimulus right so you can actually now do that and and if you don't think that's coming that's coming Right. They're going to apply behavioral economics to this, just like Facebook and Instagram and all these companies did with the little likes. All that's happening. It's just you don't see it yet, but all that's happening. Edwin, in terms of like just higher level perspective, investing guidance, purpose of the channel is to help investors transition from whatever business they're at to really build generational wealth, family office type uh, wealth. What? Yeah, that might be a good question. Would you give someone looking to build that out, starting from you know just kind of focusing on being in their own business or whatever that is, and saying, hey, hold on, I want to build something, and then you start to learn other traits like asset protection, like like you saw the video with Bryce, like you start to you start you need to look at these other areas that you're not looking at, and it, and, and even if you're not competent. You got to find someone who is competent in that. You know what? Having seen that video with Bryson, if you haven't seen that, I'd encourage you to go and check that video out and watch it from beginning to end. Because I'll tell you, there's some really, really tremendous nuggets in that that really just kind of came out in the last 10 minutes of, of that 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 you know that that episode that you did. So the number one thing I would say is incorporate a self-directed retirement account into your overall plan. And the reason why I say that is that if you go back and you understand what Bryce is talking about, what Bryce and Ramon are talking about in that episode, a self-directed retirement account will check every single box that they touched on. First, you get tax strategy, right? 
You, you can reduce your taxes right now, get tax protected growth on the investments inside a tax deferred account, which means your mo- money will multiply faster and larger, right? That's wealth. Yep. Or you can do it tax free where you, again, you, 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 you willingly pay the taxes up front, you multiply your money larger because you're not paying taxes as you go and you spend it all tax free on the back end. So taxes, you know, the tax benefit is, is one of the big things that people think about with, with retirement accounts. So that's benefit number one. Here's another box they talked about, and that is asset protection. So another reason why you see extremely wealthy individuals, okay? I mean, Warren Buffett has talked about IRAs and specifically Roth IRAs for years as a very powerful wealth building tool. Why? Because here's the thing. Most clients that I work with, what their ultimate goal is they want to generate passive income so they can step away from whatever they're doing. What does it take to generate passive income? Well, you got to have some assets that spin off income. Okay, so let's go back from there. If you want to have, if you have assets you, that are going to spin off income, you need to preserve or keep those assets. So keeping them, number one, taxes. We just talked about that. But number two is protection from creditors. So what a lot of people don't realize is, and I'm going to make a general statement here, there's a big difference again between those 401ks we talked about and IRAs. 401ks give you superior asset protection. IRAs give you great asset protection. Let me give you an example. If you personally declared bankruptcy, generally speaking, a court cannot attach a judgment to any asset held inside your retirement account. Right. Okay. If you had a business that went bankrupt, a court will not attach a judgment to any asset held inside your retirement account. If you were tried and convicted of a criminal offense, the court can take your life, but they can't take your retirement account. Okay, so asset protection is a second box that you can check with a self-directed retirement account. Third box that you can check. You brought up, you talked a lot about estate planning, right? And let me tell you what, I'm working on my estate plan right now and it, it can get really complex and it can get expensive, right? Because you're really hiring fast. attorneys to do all this stuff. I mean, it is, if you haven't been through that process, let me tell you what. It's expensive and it's time consuming and it's complex, but here's the great well, well, thing. Well, not just that, it. it also changes, right? Because if they issue you a new law that it. says, hey, look, we're going to tax us over this, then now you got to, now you got to, you know, change things up. Right. And you have multiple vehicles that have to talk together. And, yep. and, and, and I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a process. Let me just say yes. it's a process for sure. But here's the cool thing about it. The retirement account is one of the best estate planning tools that you have. It's one of the cheapest you'll ever get because the great thing about it is, is that you list out those beneficiaries on that account. That account bypasses probate, goes directly to your beneficiary the exactly way you want them. I'll say the basic fundamentals, the the underlying tenets of wealth and legacy that you talked about with Bryce in that episode, the IRA will literally check every one of those boxes. Now, again, it's not the total plan. So you're still going to need all that other stuff, but you can, but really by having a self-directed retirement account without too much thought or effort, you just check every box that they talk about, which is why it's such a fundamental wealth building tool that you want to have as part of your plan. Sure. It's like the main leg of a three legged stool is this, this one, and you get all of it. Like it's, it's just, it's just an easy, the reason I had Edwin on first from a strategic standpoint is guys, this is an easy pickup to get the tax conversation off the table. Because everything else, when I bring my CPA and everything else, we're dealing with delaying. We're eventually going to have to pay. So 1031, cost eggs. Eventually, we're going to have to pay someone. Um, Sure, there's some things we can do there. But this is the only conversation that we're having that I know of that we can legally get this off the table forever by paying Mm -hmm. it up front. So two more things that I I think would add a value. Something that we've done personally is I pay my father uh, and for certain tasks, you know, checking a property, doing some rentals. So I pay him and then he takes that capital and invests in the account. And then we're the beneficiary for that account. So that's another way where you can get additional dollars to the extent that you want to. And you have people in your team that uh, are doing services for you. Same thing with your kids. I see a lot of entrepreneurs employ their kids. They pay them. They, then they open up an IRA in the name of the child. They, the business gets a deduction. And then the child gets to make that contribution to the plan. Edwin, any thoughts on those two? I know you, you and I talked about that. So Yeah. So, you know, like you said, you brought it up is, is that opening accounts. And this is where, here's, here's what I'll say. So we, again, the way I look at the world is that, I am committed, and I'm going to use you as an example, Ray, okay? So I, I'm committed, right? When, when you, you and I became friends and started working together, it's like, okay, I'm committed to helping you reach your goals. And so I look at your situation from 
an individual standpoint. I look at you from a family standpoint, right? And we look at your business. And then we can map out this whole plan and connect all those dots. So what you find out is, is that if you're one of those folks where you're a high income earner and you have discretionary income where you want to max out contributions, take as much money off the table from taxes and creditors like we just talked about, and really make sure that money is going and being invested the way you want it to because it's self-directed and, and, it's, and it's accomplishing the goals you want, then yeah, those, those strategies for accounts for family members can be super powerful. I mean, you know, I could give you numbers, but the bottom line is, you know, you open up a, an account like a Roth based account for your child, uh, like, like you guys, and you, you make a one-time contribution. I mean, think about if just made a one-time $5,000 contribution and you bought Bitcoin with it as an example, or you bought a platform that supports Bitcoin as an example, like we're talking about, and you didn't do one more thing, what would that number look like? 60 years from now, when your child is set to stop working, I mean, you start to think about the compounding, and, and, and if you're in crypto, you've heard the numbers and how it's compounded in just a couple of years. So, so think about that over a 60 year period sure. of time. And that's 100% tax free, you can literally rewrite your family legacy with 100%. very few dollars using the right vehicle with the right type of investing strategy, and it changes everything. Yeah. And, and kids and parents are great, especially retired parents, because when you when you pay them for services in your company or they earn some income somewhere and, and, and they make that contribution, they don't get taxed a lot on that money because they're not they're already in a super low in, in some cases they're they're already low tax at all. In some cases, they don't pay any tax. So you as the business owner, if you employ them, you get the again, not CPA. I'm just giving you an idea. You get the deduction as a business owner for employing them for services and then they don't pay any tax on it. And then they open up a retirement account. I mean, it's a beautiful thing if you really think about it. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Edwin, just like and wrapping up, what what is the biggest mistake you see investors make in this space? Whether it's with the retirement, let's two separate questions within the retirement space. One and two in general, building out family wealth, legacy wealth. What are the biggest things that you see? Like you know, because you talk to a lot of clients, what are the biggest things you see come up? Yeah, I, I think that I'll say first from a retirement account standpoint, I, I think the number one. Uh, and, and I guess both these things kind of go hand in hand a little bit. The, the number one mistake I, I see people make is that they just don't pay attention to it because they get they allow themselves to get distracted on too many things. So what happens is the most common thing that I hear when somebody really gets it and starts self-directing and taking that approach is they say, man, I wish I would have learned about this 10 years ago. Sure. Like yeah. hands we did down, that. that's number one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, well, why didn't you learn about it 10 years ago, right? And the answer is because because you weren't you were you probably weren't paying attention or you might have heard it and you didn't spend the time exploring it. Kind of like and, and I'll use myself as an example. I heard about crypto. I ignored. I, I didn't say I would. It didn't. I ignored it. But I was aware of it, but I didn't do anything with it because I said I don't understand it. And finally, it got to a point where I said, okay. I've got too many of my friends and people that I respect who are talking about it and participating in this. I have to spend time getting up to speed and educated on this. And that's what made all the difference. And, and, and this is no different. So avoid the mistake, spend some time understanding self-directing, um, how it works, what the benefits are, and, and how to implement a strategy, right? And, and you won't 10 years from now say, man, why, where, where, why didn't I do this 10 years ago when I first heard you, right? So, so I'd say that's number one. Um, and then- let, let me chime in there on yeah. number one. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And it's, and it's such a great point that we're having this conversation that you spent the time to get invested in crypto and spend the time to learn all these retirement accounts. Guys, if you want to change your legacy, you're going to have to invest in your number one asset. And your number one asset is your education. Sure, I may tell everyone about a certain token I'm investing in or give them some videos to watch, but then it's on him to do the reps. It's on him to get educated. And crypto, like these retirement accounts, isn't going away it, and taxes aren't going away. Like make the investment in yourself, get educated. You know, don't, don't be that ostrich and put your head in the sand. Oh, I, you know, this is too calm. No, learn. Yeah, absolutely. And then the second point. And, and then I think, I think the second point is I'll, I'll say, this is more of a mindset issue is that people listen too much to the noise. And I think that they, they almost feel like, yes, I want to do something. I want to accomplish something, but I don't believe that I can or that I, I, I'm, I'm worthy enough to go out and create that and make that happen. And what I can tell you is, is that if, if, if that's a feeling that you have in any way, shape or form, 
you need to change that one of the best ways to, to, to start to work on that and fix that is to change the people that you surround yourself with. Plug yourself into these kind of circles, because I can tell you when Ramon and I get together and we're talking and do we have challenges in life? Sure, we do. And we talk about it, but the, it's never like, oh, my gosh, my life's going to end because of it. Or, oh, my gosh, it's, never, it's, I, I'm, it's always in, in, in a positive. It's a challenge in life, but we know something that is going to make us better on the other end by having these challenges. These aren't breaking points. They're not stopping points. It's not saying go be like everybody else and, and, and live a broke life. It's no, 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 no. There's a purpose in the challenge and it's to help you get to a higher level. And so those things shouldn't beat you down and they shouldn't discourage you. And if, and like I said, if you feel that way at all, because so many things, it's a mental construct, it, you, you've got to shift this before you shift this, okay? And, and that precedes it. So think about the people you surround yourself with because it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, the power environment is huge. And, and one of the reasons why I'm having my advisors on, of which Edwin and Keith and Bryce and my CPA and all these guys are part of that team is, I want to bring you guys the team because I don't, you know, I learn from great masters and they have other teachers as well. So I sit on the shoulders of giants, even in the crypto space or the, or the real estate investing space, or even the uh, retirement account space, you, you guys want to build an epic team. And what I'm doing with you is sharing you my team and how this is all about relationships and who you hang around with. And then you start talking about things that are outside retirement accounts. What are the real stuff, the real issues, the real emotional, mental raising kids. So Edwin and I, you know, talk about those much more than we talk about retirement accounts, because your legacy, in my opinion, is more about your way of being and how you're actually living than whatever you leave behind. Because we, you know, Edwin can help you figure some of this stuff out. We've got people on the team for that. Really, what we all want to do is really be present with our family, be present with our kids, be a great dad, um, uh, have a great spiritual side, have great relationships like Edwin and I. So like what I wanted to bring for you guys is this is like uh, an insider peek if you were uh uh, a fly on the wall of what Edwin's and I's usual talk, except usually we're talking about family and different issues that are coming up in business or how to handle this or that. And we're both challenging, ch challenging each other and growing each other and iron sharpens iron. That's ultimately where you want to get to with your team of advisors, where you're making each other better by pushing each other in, in a positive, productive way. What, what are your thoughts, Edwin? Yeah, I, I think you nailed it 100%. Uh, anything you'd like to leave our listeners with? Any, any advice, anything that, you know, you, you want to leave them with? To wrap this up yeah no you know what i mean like like i said explore it uh, to me self-directing is a philosophy it's a way of life uh it's about controlling your circumstances and um you know pursue that journey pursue that path because man is it rewarding when you when you do 100 percent. work on the mindset edwin if they want to get a hold of you or work with you or what where can we direct them to yeah so if you want to learn more about self-directing re your retirement account um uh, I'm making a free offer right now. So if you go to our website, specializedtrustcompany.com, uh, www.specializedtrustcompany.com, you can go there. And on our, our homepage, there's a form that you can fill out. I'll send you my free book. Well, I'll send you my book for free. Let me restate that. There you go. And um, right now we're offering up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, strategy call with one of our self-directed specialists there's usually a fee for that. We're waiving that fee right now. Right. And, and so if you want to learn more about self-directing, get the book for free, get the consultation for free, and a strategy session, and uh, you can learn more that way. And if I had to leave you guys with something on my end, like the biggest mistake I see specifically with the IRAs is A, people don't start soon enough. And then B, once they do get started, they don't actually make a consistent effort because we started early, but then we didn't actually make a consistent effort to use it and grow it. So like anything in life, Start early, consistently contribute, and then look to actually place and grow that money over time. That's the biggest advice I can leave you with, specifically with IRAs, is get started early and just be consistent. Almost like anything in life, right, Edwin? Yep, you got it, man. That's it. Edwin, I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming on and uh, just, just really grateful to have you uh, in my life and uh, as an advisor. Yeah, I, well, I, I appreciate you, brother, and uh, I appreciate the time today. This is awesome. Thank you, man.